It's a new season, a new day, a season of settlement. God is advancing His kingdom through transformation, restoration, inspiration, and assurance of hope through faith. We invite you to be a part of this new season. So join us for our weekly services every Wednesday for Word on Wednesday Bible Study at 6.30 p.m., Sunday for Empowerment Worship Service at 10.30 a.m., and Prayer Vigil every last Friday at 10 p.m. We can't wait for you to experience God through faith. This is your season of settlement. We are in full expectation that God will establish and settle you in this season. You have to make time. Tell somebody, make time for God. Now, say that like you may say, make time for God. So, I am going to be sharing with us, based on this advice, starting a new beginning with God. Tell somebody, starting a new beginning with God. How can we start a new beginning with God? I want you to understand that if you are going to be successful, if you are going to be established, if you are going to be settled this year, there are some things you need to do in order for, for you to be on the side of God, for God to deposit inside of you, for God to activate certain things inside of you so you can run the race with faith. Praise the name of the Lord. So be serious. Believe God. Just as you are serious with your iPhone, or your Samsung or your Android. Do you know that anytime you are going to work, when you forget your phone, as you are driving to work, you will turn around. As you remember as soon as possible, say, ah, I cannot, I cannot leave this phone behind. Because the phone is, you are depending on that phone for every connection, for every communication. So you are serious with God. So I need you to be serious with the things of God. Be serious with God. The more serious you are, the more active you, you become in the things of God. Tell somebody be serious with God. Because I was talking to somebody and I was counseling the person. If you don't know, I was counseling. I, I tell some people that, see, if you are looking to get into marriage, eh? if you want to marry the real man, the real woman, you need to, you need to be counseled. Because nowadays, what happens is that people jump into relationship without having knowledge of what they are going to meet in the future. And this one is downloaded by the direction of the Holy Spirit. So I said now, if you are looking for somebody to marry and the person is not serious in God and serious for God, you will have trouble tomorrow. Oh, let me say that again. I said you will have trouble tomorrow. But may you never encounter trouble. If you don't look for somebody that is serious with God, somebody that is serious in God, somebody who, that when you are going down in those dead moments and those challenging moments, the person can raise up your hands and tell you, you know what, we are, we are together. We can pray together. We can agree together. Instead of you looking for Dakusko and Shandarilla outside to go and talk to them and tell them what is happening to you, the two of you will come together because in a relationship is based on an agreement. An agreement is Amos chapter 3 verse number 3. How can the two walk if they be agreed? If there is no agreement between the two of you, based on the word of God, trust me, you are going nowhere. And so when you are in trouble and you are in, you, you are in struggle and the two of you are coming together because both of you are serious for God and you are serious in the things of God, trust me, the Lord will always fire up a word in you and it will become a deliverance in your life. Oh, oh, put your hands together for Jesus, somebody. Put your hands together for Jesus, somebody. Amen. I need you to come alive. Come alive. Tell somebody, come alive. Come alive. Today, I'm just having a conversation with you, okay? I'm having a conversation with you as, as we move. Number two, you, I want you to be serious with the work or the assignment of God. Tell somebody, be serious with your work or the assignment of God. Be serious with your work. If you want to have a new beginning, you must be serious with your work and assignment of God. How many of you will be put on a schedule to work and then you postpone that schedule and say, you know what, I don't care about what the manager is going to tell me. I am just going to go on vacation and when I return, I will do my work. You will be fired. True or false? 
you will be fired. Even if you have your own business, if you are your own boss, you have your own personal business going on, you can't close your business or shut down your shop for the whole month without doing anything. Except, of course, uh, there is something very unique in your life where you have a plan that you are going to open at a certain time. But you can't just get up and sit down without opening that business. You will never yield any fruit. So you have to be serious with the work of God. Now, what I'm saying that with the work of God is that there are jobs that the Lord gave you that you were praying to God every day. You were asking God every day and say, Lord, if you can give me this job. And now that God has given that to you, you are not serious with it. You are treating it at any how, any time. You know, you go to work late. You are calling off every time. I'm not available. I cannot make it. And they are looking at you. Not only that, are they looking at you. God also in heaven, who provided that job for you, is looking at you too. Because the Bible says, He that is faithful in little shall also be faithful in much. So your faithfulness to God counts in every dimension of life. Am I talking to somebody? Yeah, so you have to be serious with your work and be serious with the assignment of God. You have an assignment on the surface of the earth. Our number one assignment on the surface of the earth is to make sure that other people too are saved for Christ. So we are all evangelists, whether you like it or not. Tell somebody we are all evangelists. Yes, because the word of God. Now, somebody will say that, Okay, what is it that I'm going to say to somebody that they will come to cry? Listen, look at your personal lives. There are some things the Lord has done for you. If you had not been the Lord by, on your side by now, you will not be here. Why don't you carry that testimony to somebody and tell the person, you know what? I serve a living God. I know God can deliver you. If God can do it for me, the Lord can do it for you. Praise the Lord. So you carry the testimony. Those are the assignments of God. Even being committed to the things of God and to the house of the Lord. Do not relent. Don't give up on whatever God has given to you in the house of God. If you are working in the house of God, be fervent, be seasoned, be active, no, be passionate and be active in everything you do in the house of God. Amen. Can I hear a louder? Amen. I know that anytime somebody is asking you to visit your home, you know, just like that. I said, oh, sister, so, so, and so, or brother, so, so, and so, I want to come and pay a visit to you, to your home, you know, next two weeks or next three. Don't be afraid. I'm not, I'm not asking for any visit, okay? <laughs> Hallelujah. And then, what do you do? You prepare yourself and you make sure that every other place is clean. Things are put in order. You know, you organize yourself in the same way. When we come to the work of God and assignment of God, we put the house of God together. There's somebody we put the house of God together. We put the house of God together. You have to understand that when you are not serious with the work of God and with the assignment of God, it goes against you. If you want to have a new beginning or to start a new beginning in your life, you have to start being serious with God. Nobody should coerce you to pray. Nobody should force you to come to church. Nobody should force you to be on time. No, nobody should force you to do anything in the house of God. But you are just willing to do it. And you are available to do it. The other day I was talking to somebody. I said, you know what? Because of your faithfulness in the house of God. Now, let me use her as a preach. Let me use her as a preach. I'm talking about my choir leader now. Sister, Sister Inonge or Dr. Inonge. You know, on Friday we were here. And she came and she entered and I saw her face and I look at her appearance and she came. I knew very well that, you know, she was a little bit tired. I mean, exhausted, tired. Are you hearing me? But she got up, she took the microphone, she began to lead and I said, Lord, if only you can give us more people like this. Why am I saying this? When somebody do something very good, you have to praise the person. Two of us, you must praise the person. When somebody does something great, you have to praise the person. And then she get up, she got the microphone and she started leading the song. And then all of a sudden, the atmosphere just broke. And the presence of God descended. We were worshiping. I said, Noah, even in her weakness, even in her tiredness, she remember what she's doing is not for Pastor Carl, but what she's doing is doing for the Lord God Almighty. Whatever you do for the Lord, whatever you do for him, God will always give you something strong in your life. Can I hear a louder amen? So you have to be serious with the work of God. Now, when I was talking before, I said, now when you are ready to enter into relationship, you enter into relationship knowing very well that every, everything else in that relationship will work good for you. 
So the first thing we look for right now, our relationship with God is very important. Tell somebody your relationship with God. It is good. It is good to have fun outside. It is good to have fun everywhere, but you have to make sure that your relationship with God, ask yourself, what am I doing this year? What, what am I going to give God this year? Somebody will tell you, oh, you know what, Pastor? We'll be going to church all this while. But when you realize, you'll be going to church, but you don't have a relationship with God. Are you hearing me? You can know the scriptures. You can quote the scriptures as just the devil can do. He can also quote the scripture anytime. But when your relationship with God is not active, listen to me, you are not doing anything for the Lord. There's some of the new beginnings. There's some of the new beginnings. And you have to be very serious with the work of God. Now, number, number three, be serious with people. Or be serious with the people of God. Tell, tell somebody to be serious with the people of God. There are people God placed in your life. There are people God brings your way. We cannot discard them. We cannot treat them anyhow. When God brings somebody in your life, you have to treat that person because God treats us very wonderful. Because we want to have a new, a, a new beginning in our life, you must learn to treat people every time. Treat people well. You may never know where you are going to come, go tomorrow. You may never know where God is going to send you tomorrow. But you must learn to treat people very well. Does somebody learn to treat people very well? Don't joke with the things of God or don't joke with the people of God. Are you hearing me? Don't joke with the people of God. There are people God. That's why those of you who normally enter into trouble with somebody and then by little things, because there is a fight over here, that, that is the agenda of the enemy to make sure that you are not enjoying your new beginning moment. He will put enmity between you and somebody. But if you have the love of God, I'm telling you, this journey in Christ is not a journey of just milk to drink. It's a journey of chewing bones. It's a journey of knowing well that, no, you must learn to let some things go, in your, go off in your life. Most of the time, we want to do new beginning, but our old lifestyle is still hanging up on us. Are you hearing me? Some people say, oh, I just want to do, uh, no, I, I don't mind. No, we know, we, know, we know every day it's just about church. When I'm ready to go, I'll go. No, no. When you know God placed somebody in your life, what are you doing to see that person be promoted in their life? There are a lot of people around in our community who are looking onto us so that they can become who God calls them to become by looking at the example and our attitude we have. I pray. That you will treat people very well. I say, I pray that you treat people very well. Now, I want to tell you that you are very special people in the house of God. Tell somebody you are very special. Hey, say it like a minute. Tell, tell your wife you are, you are very special. Ah, tell you, say you are very special. You are very special in the house of the Lord. Are you hearing me? You are a very special person in the house of the Lord. Therefore, you have to take God seriously in your life. You are very special people. Nobody can create you. If somebody talks about you and says, oh, you are not beautiful, you are not handsome, you are, they, can, they, are not, they can never become carpenter to create you. Are you hearing me? But because God fashioned you and created you in the image of him. And God has put his spirit inside of you. And so you are, you are representing God on the surface of the earth. And therefore nobody can talk you down. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Do not allow any situation to bring you down. You must start your new beginning now. Now, you cannot... You just be sitting down and to see success come to you when you don't start doing something in your life. I give you a challenge this month that the month of August will be a month that you come to a place to know that God is in your life. Can I hear a louder amen? Never take for granted and never take God's assignment and God's people for granted. Never leave a past investment. Never leave on a past investment. Tell somebody, never leave on a past investment. Now, always make a new investment in your life. Are you hearing me? The more you read the word of God, the more active you become. I want you to understand that if you want to live in the new things and operate in those new things, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Is somebody hearing me? I want to see a house. Now, one of the th three things that we have in Nations Life Chapel is the word. I'm going to say it again. Is the word, is prayer, and is worship. Are you hearing me? It's the word, it's prayer, and it's what? It's worship. Now, I was looking at everybody today worshiping God. We're worshiping God like, you know, 
the, if your, your rent is never going to be paid this month let me calm down like you are worshipping God in fear you are worshipping God in doubt you are worshipping God if God is actually going to sustain you you will leave see they didn't even respond <laughs> just want to be alert you are worshipping God as if there is no God that's why in worship service time do you know when they say we are worshipping God you are giving reverence to God do you know that we are reverencing God okay you you reference god mean that you give him all the honor for what he has done for you we are starting from here now are you hearing me so you reference god even if you think there is no millions in your pocket now you are reverencing god because of what he will do for you tomorrow you are referencing god because he has sustained your life you are referencing god because he is the king of your life so when you come to worship service and worship is going on, you don't have to sit down. No, I'm telling you, it's an abomination. It's like you going to the president, right? Visiting the castle. May you revisit the castle soon in the name of Jesus. You go to the president and you are on interview or something else and the president is talking to you, sitting, uh, standing up and you are sitting down and you cross your leg. Uh, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Ah, you are worshipping God and chewing gum mercy and atonement some people pick their phone I'm no longer they go to their camera I see everything thank God where God put me I'm no longer and in their camera I'm no longer God knows you are beautiful no I'm serious no 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 serious I want you to come to a place in service where we worship God and the presence of God is flowing. Things are just happening. I don't need to preach the gospel. I don't need to lay hands on anybody. But in the presence of the worship, things are happening. Sickness is disappearing. The power of God is flowing. Because it takes your cooperation to make it. Are you hearing me? May the Lord give you the power to stand. And I know and I believe this man, God, will answer you. Oh, receive that. I said the Lord will answer you. So when you come to the house of the Lord, begin from now. You know, when it is prayer time, you know, when prayer is going on, you don't, you don't, you're not watching and seeing who is praying, who is not praying. No, you are in the spirit of the Lord. Are you hearing me? That's why you have to be very active in the things of be serious with God. Be serious with the things of God. Be serious with God's people. God will place people in your life. And sometimes, look at what happened. Sometimes you are at your job and there are people who don't like you at your job. There are people who don't agree with you at your job. And then from Monday when you start your job, you are just praying to God every day, Father, let it be Friday. Maybe on that Friday you don't go to your job. So you wait up to Monday. And then you, when Friday comes, in your mind, say, Lord, I hope, I hope I'm not going back to this job. Because you don't want to see anybody. Listen, if you're a child of God, you have to do what the Lord tells you to do. And what it tells you to do, keep on loving. And keep on loving. Can you tell somebody, keep on loving. Keep on loving and keep on loving. Because if you're a child of God, you have to understand that God is able to give you that spirit. I pray for you. May you become a new Christian. May the spirit of God be activated in you. I want to see men and women for two, three hours or for four hours or for one hour, you are just praying in the Holy Ghost. The Lord is firing up something in your spirit and ideas are flowing through you and the power of God is radiating. God is manifestation, manifesting through you and things are happening as you are speaking. You want to get to that place in your life where the Holy Spirit, you are having an encounter just like that. Are you hearing me? If we don't talk about it, you won't hear it anywhere. And you should know that a church that preaches the truth and talk about the truth will always grow through the word. If I come here and tell the Holy Ghost, ah, the Spirit of God has come upon me. I'm about to lay hands on. I don't need to do half for the power of God to come upon me. Are you hearing me? Through the word of God, you will be revived. Now, let me go to my own test this morning. Isaiah chapter 42. Let's go there. Isaiah chapter 42, verse number 8 to 10. 
Isaiah chapter 42, verse number 8 to 10. That's the text for the message this morning. I know. The Bible says, can we read it all together on the board? If we have the screen you know, in front of us, let's read together. One to go. I am the Lord. This is my name, or that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. Neither my praise to graven what? Images. Go ahead to verse number 9. Look at what it says. We can read it again in verse number 9. Let's read one to go. Behold, the former things are come to pass, and new things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Now look at number 10. Look at number 10. Look at number 10. Now what shall we read together? One to go. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praises from the end of the earth. Ye that go down to the sea, and all that is therein, the isles and the inhabitants thereof. You know what I said? So, so this is the word of the Lord that is given. You know, it's a prophecy that is being given that something is about to happen. And it's a prophecy that has been foretold about the Messiah, Jesus Christ, that is going to be born. And the Lord now is saying, when you go to verse number 8, he said, he said I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Go to number 8. He said, I am the Lord. So God is saying that I am the Lord and that is my name. I am the Lord, that is my name. And my glory will I not give to another. God cannot share his glory with anybody. Are you hearing me? That is why when you are giving testimony in the house of the Lord, you are giving testimony because you are referencing God and telling God, if it had not been you, I will not be where I am. So God does not share his glory with anybody. And the Bible says, neither my praise to graven images. So it doesn't matter. You can't go and say, oh, as for this one, it's not God who has done this for me. As for this one, I consulted somebody somewhere else and the person gave me direction. And even if the person gave you direction through the word of God, it is God who has performed that miracle. Is somebody hearing me? So this is the word of the Lord that has been given to the children of Israel, he said, "What well, I am behold, to go to verse number 9, then, then the Lord now says something. In verse number 7, Behold, the former things are come to pass. All the things in the past, they are, they, in the past, they are, they are going away. They are going away. They are going away. And somebody else is coming as a savior. Somebody else is coming as a servant. Somebody else is coming to redeem. Say, and I new things do I declare. Ah, I prophesy to somebody. A new thing happening in your life. I prophesy to somebody that a new thing will happen in your life. In the month of August, I prophesy to you, new business will emerge. I prophesy to you, new spiritual attainment will come upon you. I prophesy to you, expansion will come your way. I, I prophesy to you that establishment will happen on you in the name of Jesus before they spring forth I tell you of them he said before those things will come as I'm telling you right now I am telling you they are going to happen that is the word of the Lord before they spring forth I am telling you of them before they come forth God will do them and God is preparing them for your sake oh you don't believe it I'm telling you God is doing something great for your sake are you hearing me? If you used to go to the doctor every man, God is giving you a new start, a new flesh of blood. God is giving you a new power. God is giving the spirit upon your life. I am telling you, it's happening right now as I'm speaking. So the Lord is saying this. Now look at what happened. Now do you know that anytime God says this now, the response he gave to the people is verse number 10. Look at what it says. God said, I am giving you, I will do a new thing. Now they say, sing unto the Lord a new song. Mm. Sing unto the Lord a new song. A new song does not necessarily mean that you are going to compose a song or something, write a song. No. Say, now, now you have to understand that say, the Lord is saying that number one. So the duty of the Lord in this scripture is that God is giving you a message. He is the messenger. Now, God now, now demands from you what is called response. Are you hearing me? I will do a new thing for you. Now, what I need you to do is that you will sing a new song. Even though the thing is not yet here, but I am telling you to sing a new song. Is somebody hearing me? And you begin to sing that new song, it will happen. Now, do you know in music, sing a new song. In new music, there are four things that, are called, that, that comprises in music. Now, when you are doing music or you are writing a song, number one thing, 
you can't do a song without a message you know that right so the song we sing is a message number one is the lyrics the lyrics of that song the lyrics of that music that is number one and then when the lyrics now come in now the lyrics are flowing in your mind because the lyrics now give you the message to give out to the people or for you to be able to dance on so the lyrics come and the next thing that comes after the lyrics is the melody somebody tell somebody melody the melody follows and the melody is the one that gives you the tune to what you want to sing how you want to sing it and then after the melody what follows the melody is the rhythm there's somebody the rhythm so without the lyrics there's no music without the melody there's no music and without the rhythm there's no now god is giving you a rhythm and the rhythm depends on the movement the way you sing your song that's how you dance on the song is somebody hearing me tell somebody there is a rhythm in your life and the rhythm is coming to your life now because God is giving you a rhythm. The rhythm of God is asking you to move according to what he has spoken to you. He said, I will do a new thing. Sing a new song on that new thing. Be active on what I am saying. And when you have that rhythm, your movement becomes very active. Then you will have a proper music. Oh, can I hear a louder? Amen. So we have the three parts. We have the lyrics part. We have what? Huh? the melody we have that we have we have the lyrics the message the melody which is the tune then we have what the what the rhythm so, so it's just like you go to a place and people are singing and then you're supposed to dance and you miss the rhythm <laughs> if you miss the rhythm people will be watching you ah. in the world of music sister Yvonne who is a professional musician huh? in the world of music and singing you can't start dancing before the song starts no is it true Sister Rose? in the world of music like oh we are about to have praise and worship praise the Lord hallelujah and everybody in the house start dancing the singer will just be confused. Are you hearing me? It is the music that determines the movement. The rhythm determines the movement. God is saying, I will do a new thing in your life. What I need you to do is to respond to the message I'm giving you and have a proper rhythm. Put on your dancing shoe because something is about to happen. I don't know the kind of rhythm you are dancing to right now. You are dancing to the tune and the rhythm of the world that are saying things are very difficult and things are very hard. But in the real sense, God is saying he's doing a new thing. Can you see it? Even though you don't have the money to pay your rent, even though you don't have the money to come up with the rent, but God is saying I will do a new thing. It depends on you how you dance to what God is saying. Is somebody hearing me? So you have to. Then the last part of the music is called harmony. Does somebody say harmony. The harmony is the blend of the various voices. The various part of the music that supersedes the melody and become on top of the melody. Are you hearing me? And then the harmony begins to blend. And so God is saying that I will do a new thing for you. He has given you a message number two. God is saying to you that right now, whatever I am going to do, be ready to dance. And God says when you are dancing, the color of your dance shall be full of different colors. It's not going to be only one color. There will be blue in there. There will be green in there. There will be yellow in there all the colors will come together that is a blend of things God are going to do for you and may you receive that now your situations are changing they are changing so you have to understand God said I will do a new thing it depends on you how you want to do it how you want to function how you want to what rhythm are you dancing to right now yeah are you a child of God are you a person in Christ that have the spiritual attainment and people come to you and they want to listen to what you are going to say. When they give a complaint to you, do you respond with a positive word or you go down the drain and tell them what you also feel negatively? 
Now guess what happened? Anytime God is about to do something, this is a thing that many people don't know. Anytime God says he's doing something unique, the harmonious things God is doing, the beautiful thing God is doing, there is a sense of irritation that comes beyond what God wants to do. Someone say irritation. And I'm teaching you this so you can know that when God says, I'm going to do something, or God start doing something with you, you have to be very careful not to get irritated. Now, the reason for the irritation is to take your focus off what God has given to you through the word of God. That when you become irritated, then you become empty, then he can slap you. So when you are getting irritated over so many things or few things in your life or things in your life, you have to be very careful. You don't lose that control. I was talking to somebody last night around 1 a.m. They called me. I woke up. I said, what happened? I said, there is a fight going on. Ba, 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 ba. There is a fight going on. And I, I was just hearing, not from here in America, back somewhere else in Africa. I said, I was throwing stuff. And I, was in the, I said, what is that? He said, oh, that's a quick import. Then she just threw her. I said, what happened? He said, ah, you know what? She's packing her stuff. I said, come down. He said, bro. He said, no, pastor. No. I have to demonstrate. I said, there's no demonstration. Because if you demonstrate, you just remove one hand and throw it in the air. You will land that person on the floor. You are in prison. You've got to be very smart. You can't get irritated over what God says he wants to do. So if you are a type of person that get irritated quickly, you have to learn to begin a new style and a new lifestyle in Christ to ask God to help you. And the devil, the enemy, comes to the church and he doesn't do this thing anywhere. Probably out there is one person. But in the house of God, he knows that's where we receive the word of God. So he comes in. I can be walking to church right now and be serious to God and just walk by past you and just go without greeting you. Say, oh, you see, she saw me this morning, did not even greet. She didn't even greet. Hmm. Me too, I'm waiting. Now, there are people who do teach for that. Tell somebody, I bind it for, for that. No, no, say, 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 we bind it for that. It's a spirit that because you do this to me, I will also retaliate. And so you become in the house of God, the enemy is just looking and just mocking. Do you know what it does? Let me tell you, beloved. When that happens and you go to prayer and you want to pray, he brings back that which you have already gone through into your mind. Do you think God can hear your prayer? So irritation will come your way. You get irritated. You get offended. And I ask myself, no, why can the devil not leave us alone? But every time it will bring offenses into your life. And then you focus on those offenses. And then you begin to deviate from what the Lord has given you to do. So if you're a man or a woman that normally gets irritated, you, every small, you're a quick temper, somebody says, you know what? I cannot change the way I am. That's how I am born. You lie. Oh, that's how I'm born. The day you were born, you've grown from that state to now. So some things must leave you. Now, especially if it's in your power, you realize that some things are... And I'm, let me tell you something. Another download. The more you hang out with negative and bitter people, the more bitter you become. Two of us. You know me. Because you begin to emulate what they do. You copy what they do without knowing that you are doing it. Then sometimes, if the Holy Spirit slaps you with the wisdom and the knowledge, you say, ah, That is when the Holy Spirit is still inside of you. He will remind you of what you are doing. That is not in your nature. And sometimes when you do it, when they break or you walk away, you become so ashamed. The same enemy will come back to attack you and to tell you that you see what you have done right now. Look at you. 
irritation can take you out of the presence of God offenses can squeeze you not to enjoy the presence of God so you have to let the past go and overlook tell somebody overlook tell somebody overlook you must be ready to accept to know that's why a husband and a wife that lives in a home and they sleep on the bed and the face is on the wall the other one is on the north the one is on the south you are allowing the enemy to sleep between you I'm telling you the truth and that he doesn't need to do it instantly he begins to come in small little by little are you hungry? I'm not do you want to give you some money? no and then when a man is going to why are you going out at all? I'm coming why are you coming out? so now you are running away from your responsibility and your accountability and he places you in a corner where he can work on you and take everything out of you and by the time you realize you have no word there ah the bible says do not be ignorant of the devices of the enemy don't be ignorant your new beginning start now i say your new beginning start now be serious with god the Bible says, I will do a new thing. Keep on declaring that word. Keep on speaking that word. Somebody told me the other month, or the two, three, or four months ago, said, Pastor, ah, it's like it is not happening. I said, it is happening. How you know things are happening for your sake, in your good favor, is that you are still alive. Ah, you have not any hospital appointment that will, that will constitute any form of surgery on you. So be joyful. Tell somebody be joyful. No, no, say it like you may say be joyful. I am teaching you something so you know. Even men, we the men, sometimes we have, we have, we have muscles and we want to flex our checks and flex our muscles and to respond. It's not necessary. The Bible says, a soft answer deterred what? Wrath. So the more you answer softly with wisdom, the more power you retain that you'll be able to speak at all. So if you're somebody who gets angry every day and you realize that this is my personal scientific practice I'm going to give you, and you realize that you can't close your mouth, Get what? Put it in your mouth. Close your mouth. And just don't talk. Let the ice cube cool your tongue. At least there is something in your mouth you can't you can open up to say. Do you know that a word released from your mouth wrongly can never be taken back? If you truly accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, even though we are not perfect, we are striving towards perfection, you ask the blood of Jesus and the power of God to help you. And so, irritation will come. And what quickly kills irritation is quick forgiveness. Are you hearing me? Be quick to forgive. I'm not talking about forgiveness where you say you are forgiving, but when something happens, then, hmm. do you know, the other day you did something, so you go to the archives and bring it back. I'm not talking about that one. Are you hearing me? Some people have their notebooks since 1991. I can see that uh, on your table right now. The 91, you still have people at the back of your brain. And you are telling me, ah, this person has done this to me. So you are just waiting. No. Please, we have a bigger assignment on the surface of the earth to be wasting time on trivial things that will not prosper as in the kingdom. I want you to develop a spirit that the tenacity in God and tell yourself, even though the best way to walk around is to overlook. Now, overlook is not snobbishing the person. 
I, I'm not saying you go snobbish somebody or to 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 uh, 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 to, to uh, how to call it to despise somebody. But what I'm saying is that you overlook in your heart and you tell yourself it is well. In that position, I let it go. It's happening. These are practical preachings. It's better than ah, the spirit of the Lord come upon me. Come and receive it now. Amen. Tell someone you need a new beginning. And finally, the new beginning, apart from forgiving a quick forgiveness, is the truth of the word of God. When you say the truth right now, the devil can never find any fault in you afterwards. Sometimes, example with our kids. You are standing in front of your kids and you are lying. And you are saying something. And when you say that because they are kids, they won't say anything to you. They'll look at you. And then they walk away. And you know how their imaginations are. Their minds are. They keep stuff. They can store things in their mind. They go away. I was listening to back from a few years ago, I think 2011, there's this couple that sings, you know, the, 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 the man is the leader of the song, of the, of the, 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 the team, and the, the guy, the lady rather play the keyboard. And so, they were having a conversation, and then the, the lady was saying to the man, and said, you know what? Today, I don't know what was wrong I don't know how direction you are going today, but this were not just going one well. And then he, he responded and said, Ah, you know, we always do this, it is in the blood. And then the, 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 the small boy looked at the <laughs> look at the and said, Ah, you don't even know the lyrics of your song. Uh, I'm telling you what happened. Kids pay attention on the things we do around our environment. Do not underestimate them. Are you hearing me? And so you have to come to a point yourself to tell yourself that anytime you are around those kids, the truth must be what? You have to say the truth every day because we are teaching them to grow. Likewise, when you come to the word of God, when the enemy appears to you, what you speak to them is the truth word of God. I believe in the word. Nothing shall take me out of the jurisdiction of the word of God. God is doing a new thing in my life. If you have a problem with drinking, if you have a problem with lying, if you have a problem with lateness, you have a problem with delays in your life, you got to check your environment with the truth. That is the only way you can be free. And once you say the truth, you will go back to sleep. You might offend people by saying the truth, but you might have your peace when you sleep at night. Tell somebody the truth. You are starting a new beginning now. Be serious with God. Be serious with the work of God and the assignment of God. Be serious with the people of God. Some of you, you are quick to terminate friendship without any cause. I don't want to be your friend again. Then you leave, you go to another person's friend. They say, I don't want to be your friend again. Then you are moving from one place to one. Check yourself. But if that friend is becoming a toxic to you, you advise yourself because it's not going to promote the, your, your life in the kingdom of God. Toxic means that they do things to pull you down. They do things to despise you. I told somebody, let me tell you something. When we started this church, you're going to, you're going to surprise you. When we started this church, you know, back in 20, you know, 2014 there about in Laguna, there were times people would not come to church. At that time, I would drive all the way from Stockton. I'd be driving all the way down, up and down before any other person joined us. And it's just me and my daughter. And then when we get to the church, as little as she was, three years or I think three or four years, she will take a broom and be sweeping. And after she sweep, finished sweeping, I'll get on the keyboard and I'll be singing praise. Today, I will lift up my voice in praise. And the owner of that building, 
not the gym, before the gym. The owner of that building comes in to open for me. He comes and sneak very quietly and sit in the corner. And then he'll be listening. Before you run that, he goes down, coming one by one. Coming one by one. See, if you wait until people arrive in your life for you to determine what God wants you to do, you'll be late in life. Keep on doing what God has called you to do. Are you hearing me? When you listen to the Bible study last Wednesday, I said, until you start, nothing happens until what? You start. You got to start somewhere else. You got to start somewhere else. The entertainment is good. One of the things I want to ask you as a business person, are you even saving? Are you saving? Or you're just eating? Are you saving? Do you have something to come? Don't tell me that, oh, the money you are making is not, is not there. And there are situations in your life. By the time the salary will come, there are needs and requests from some places ahead of that. And you meet those needs and requests. You forget about yourself. Your new beginning starts right now. Don't waste your time on things that will not produce anything in the kingdom. Don't waste your time on conversation that will not elevate your life. Don't waste your time with relationship that is not promoting the peace and the gospel in your life because they will destroy you. They will destroy you. Shall we write it? How many of you are blessed? How many of you are blessed? The Lord will do it for you. Stay on track. Stay on course. Refuse to be distracted. Live for God. Be holy for God. Stand in the right position with God. And see the hand of God prevail in your life. Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Pray right now. Declare. Declare that all the words you have heard tonight to this afternoon. Declare. 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 In the name of Jesus. Declare the power of the Holy Spirit. Declare in the name of Jesus. I want you to lift up your voice. Lift it up. Lift it up. It's a month of new beginning. I want you to declare that. Prophesy that to your life. Prophesy. Prophesy. As we bring our declaration on the board. Prophesy in the name of Jesus. Declare by the spirit of the living God. Prophesy. Leko paragada. Mekato. I want you to speak to your spirit. Speak to your soul. Declare to your soul. Prophesy. Promise yourself the word of God. Declare whatever you are seeing right now challenging you will not be there forever. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ your new days and your best days are coming. New things are happening to you. New elevations are happening to you. New establishments are happening to you. I don't care wherever you are listening to me from. I declare in the name of Jesus Christ God is turning the table around for you. Oh Father we declare let your will be elevated. We thank you Holy Spirit. Commit this week into the hands of God. Commit the weak into the hands of God. Commit the weak into the hands of God. In the name of Jesus, may God take you out of any bad stuff, any old stuff in your life, any baggage in your life holding onto you and pulling you down. May God give you a new moment. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Can I hear a louder amen?